Hi there, let's learn some biology and we're going to focus on the structure and function of cell membranes. The fluid mosaic model describes the structure of the plasma membrane as a mosaic of phospholipids, cholesterol, proteins and carbohydrates and this gives the membrane a fluid character. So it's not solid, it's sort of you know squishy and a bit fluid like. So firstly, the plasma membrane defines the borders of cells and also most organelles. The plasma membrane is selectively permeable, which means that the membrane allows some materials to freely enter or leave the cell or organelle, while other materials cannot move freely. A phospholipid is a molecule consisting of glycerol, two fatty acids and a phosphate linked head group. The molecules arrange themselves into a bilayer, which ranges from 5 to 10 nanometers in thickness. The hydrophilic phosphate head faces outwards and the hydrophobic fatty acids face inwards. Hydrophilic means water loving and hydrophobic means water hating, which is why the hydrophobic tails go towards the middle. So they're not facing away from. So they're facing away from anything which has water in it. Cholesterol is a lipid that sits with phospholipids in the core of the membrane. But you don't find cholesterol in the cell membranes of bacteria. And cholesterol molecules make the membranes more rigid, which explains why cholesterol helps to maintain the shape of animal cells. The permeability of cell membranes can be influenced by lots of factors. And remember that permeability means how easy it is for substances to pass through something, in this case, a membrane. So solvent concentration is one of those factors. The more easily the phospholipid bilayer is dissolved, the more permeable the membrane is. So if you do an experiment, you need to control the solvent concentration using the same solvent at the same concentration so that it doesn't have an effect. pH will affect the protein structure in the, in the cell membrane. And if you want to control the pH, you can use a buffer solution. Higher temperatures increase the fluidity of the membrane, increasing its permeability. If you think about it, the molecules have got more energy, so they're moving around more, so it's more fluid. Again, in an experiment, you need to control the temperature, and you can do this using a water bath. So you could, whatever you're doing, put a beaker in a water bath, and that will control the temperature. So thinking about that, let's talk about an experiment, how we can investigate the permeability of a cell membrane. Beetroot is often used as a model because the release of the coloured pigment is easy to quantify using colorimetry. So I'll talk you through the steps. First, you need to collect the beetroot samples. So you could use a cork borer to collect samples of uniform diameter. Then cut discs of a uniform depth using a sharp scalpel on a white tile and then rinse it in cold water. And this removes excess pigment that has leaked through the physically broken membranes because you cut some of them. You then add ethanol. So you can prepare at least five concentrations of ethanol, for example, 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% .40 in different beakers. And then place the discs of beetroot into the corresponding solution for 10 minutes. Make sure the samples are completely covered by ethanol solutions and mixed frequently throughout the 10 minutes. Then remove the discs from the solutions to prevent further changes and to allow a fair comparison between the experiments. Then calibrate the colorimeter using a curvet or distilled water at an absorbance of about 520 nanometers. The curvets must be dry and the clear sides must not be touched to prevent potential errors in the readings. Then we need to measure the absorbance of each solution. So to do this, we can plot the results in a graph with concentration on the x-axis and absorbance on the y-axis. And the darker the solution, the more pigment has been released. 
and this is reflected in a higher reading for absorbance. So if more pigments release, this means that the membrane is more permeable. And that sums up um, the permeability of cell membranes for you and also the structure of cell membranes. So remember that it's um, you have the fluid mosaic model for cell membranes and that the factors that affect the permeability, so the ability of stuff to pass through the membrane, are affected by pH, temperature and the solvent concentration.